So the final step of our paper sculpture unit is to incorporate paper quilling. So if you look at your paper sculpture sketchbook, you can see an example of paper quilling on your front cover. Paper quilling is the method of rolling and bending tiny slips of paper and creating different forms and patterns. So as you can see here at the top, this is kind of just a design and then down here they actually use the paper to create this peacock. So I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration for what you can do for your letter. Um, I want to go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples in your sketchbook before we talk about what we are going to do today. So once your letter is done, once you've painted your letter, you are going to now start your paper quilling. So here are three examples from last year, all right? So you can see the top student painted their letter. They decided to leave some of it white, which is fine, they just painted the front. I'm totally fine with that if that's what you wanna do. She then decided to create a picture using the paper quilling on her. So she has clouds, she has a hot air balloon, and she has a sun at the top. So it's kind of creating an image. The second student decided to paint their letter all in the same color. Once again, totally fine. And then they have a butterfly and they have flowers and they have this floral design using the paper quilling technique. The third student painted theirs entirely black and then just used the paper quilling to create kind of a design. It's not a recognizable photo or picture like this hot air balloon or the flowers, but it's just kind of a decorative piece and that is fine with me as well. So those are some examples. Let's take a look at one more. This student went way crazy. I love it, as you know that I love those rainbows. And she did all different types of paper quilling, but she has a really simple design and she just created a rainbow on hers. Okay, this took her a while. And um, even though it doesn't require a lot of design, maybe like this one, I'm still okay with this as well. All right, so. The first thing that you need to do is you're going to practice your paper quilling techniques and then you're going to come up with the design for your project. So we're going to start on page two today and on two today it says you're going to see 17 different paper quilling techniques in the 17 boxes below demonstrate each of those techniques. So you'll see all of these boxes, you'll see each of these techniques and you have to recreate each of these techniques in each of these boxes below. So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now. All right, so when you're ready for your paper quilling page, you're gonna need your sketchbook. You're going to need um, some paper strips and it does not matter what color you have. Honestly, I would just do all the same so you're not ruining all the color strips. You're gonna need a glue bottle and then you're gonna need a paper quilling tool, okay? So you can find those in this blue packet. And they're all the same and you only need one, so it doesn't matter which one you grab, okay? Just grab one. And what you do is you take your paper strip and there's a little slit at the top of this tool that you're gonna set your paper in, okay? So you're gonna put it in there. You're gonna put it in there, see how it's in there? And then you're just gonna start rolling it. So I'm just gonna use my fingers and pinch it and I'm gonna start rolling it towards me. And I'm honestly just holding my finger still and just twisting the tool with this other hand, okay? And you're gonna keep doing that until the entire piece of paper is rolled up. All right, so now it's rolled up and I have a nice tight coil. So if I look at the next page, it'll tell me what shapes I need to make. Okay, so the first one it says is I need to make a tight coil. Well, that's what I made. So if this were done, I would put a piece of glue right here. I'd glue it, that would be my tight coil, and then I would glue it to my box, okay? So you would glue it directly on your sketchbook page, right? The second one says a loose coil, so you would just let it loosen. And for the sake of demonstrating, I'm gonna go ahead and glue it. So you're just gonna use a tiny, tiny, amount of glue. Barely any at all. And you are going to have to hold the shape in place for just a second. Okay, so I'm going to hold it for just a little bit. Okay, and then when I think I'm ready, I would put glue on my shape or my Facebook or my sketchbook page, and then I would glue it right on there. Okay, now what I would also like you to do is I would also like you to label it. So, 
if you wouldn't mind just writing like the name of it. Okay, so that when I that way when I'm grading it, I know that you have all of them there. All right, so that's how you're gonna complete sketchbook sketchbook page two. This is what your sketchbook page should look like when it's done. This is a great example. You can see that they glued all of their examples on their page and they label them with pencil. So this is what I'm looking for and these are the expectations for sketchbook, sketchbook page two. Now that I've shown you how to use your paper quilling tools, where you're going to glue them on your sketchbook, we're gonna watch a few of these paper quilling techniques from YouTube. So I'm just gonna kind of talk as the video plays, okay? So the first one's gonna be what we call a tight coil, where you roll your paper extremely tight and it just makes a circular shape, all right? You can practice that there. The second one you're seeing is a loose coil where you roll it into the same tight coil as before, but this time you're gonna kind of let it out a little bit, all right? And then you're gonna glue it from there. So it kind of just makes a bigger circle. And you can let that as loose as you want when you're creating that coil. The next one is called a teardrop. So you're gonna start with that coil shape every time, as you're noticing. So you're gonna roll it, you're gonna let it out a little bit, and then you're just gonna pinch it after you glue it to create that teardrop shape. You're pinching one end. It's as easy as that. And that is done after gluing. Okay, so that's the teardrop shape. The next one is called the shaped teardrop. So same thing, you're gonna create your coil. You're going to glue it. You're going to pinch it again. And then you're gonna kind of bend it so that the teardrop shape is kind of bowed and bend on the side, giving it kind of a paisley look. Okay, so now the same technique done on the last one, but now this one's bent even more. So you're really pushing it, almost giving it kind of a fishtail at the end, rolling it around. Now it really looks like a paisley and it's a, called a bent teardrop shape. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, just let this video play for a second and you're just gonna keep seeing some different paper quilling techniques. That way if you need to go back and kind of watch how they did it, you can. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it there. But if you're interested in watching the rest of it, there are 35 different paper quilling techniques that you can watch. If you go to YouTube and type in 35 paper quilling shapes, arts and craft tutorials by Handyworks, you will find it there. And so once you're done with that, 
then you are going to start designing your project. All right, so just a reminder that you need to have all 17 different paper coiling techniques before you move on, and then you are going to start designing your project. So that is going to be on page one of your sketchbook, and you have to do all four, and you're going to draw your initial, and I'm gonna show you an example of that. Okay, now let's take a look at sketchbook page one. So this is an example that a student did and what I'm looking for. So they drew their initial and then they sketched out four different ideas for their letter. You notice that it's in color, so they knew exactly what colors they would need and they provided the detail that they needed. If you just slop, like draw a slop letter and don't add a color, don't do all four, then you're not gonna get the points, okay? It even says use colored pencils, so. Here's kind of what the expectations are for that page and just gives you an idea of what I'm looking for when I will be grading that page for you.